Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. Today we're revisiting my Austrian pine. When we last left it, uh, we were pinching the candles of the new spring growth. And now it's June 16th and the needles have come out. And uh, we're going to do some cleanup work to the tree. Uh, the reason I'm going to do some cleanup work is we have a club open house tonight and I want to remove all the old needles off the tree. Normally I wouldn't do that but to make the tree look nice we've got to get rid of all these long needles from last year. So it, the tree has enough foliage now with the new needles out that uh, it'll be fine health, health wise to remove them. So that's one thing we're going to be doing today. The other thing we're going to be looking at the bark and uh, talking about pine bark. Um, it's a strange topic, but we're going to talk about it. And we're going to do some cleanup work to the tree to get it ready for the open house tonight. So here's our first branch or lowest branch on the tree. And you can see our needles from last year are this long. And the new needles are about half that length right now. Some of the smaller buds, they're only very tiny, but uh, they will elongate as the summer goes on um, slowly. And hopefully they won't be quite as long as last year's growth. Every year they get a little bit shorter, but uh, as I said before, with an Austrian pine, you're never going to get really short, tiny needles. It's a long needled tree. So, to remove this growth from last year, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, one is you can just pull them. So if you just grab the needle, and Austrian pines, the needles grow in pairs, so from each uh, base of the needles, you'll get two needles coming off. Uh, Japanese white pine is a five needle tree which means there's five needles come out of each little cluster. So you can just grab the needles towards the base and pull like that. So there's our two needles. And uh, there, hopefully you can see that. Um, so what that does, it leaves a little scar where you pull it off on the tree. And I've read that some people like that. Um, they feel it uh, interrupts the sap flow in the branch and you might get more back budding. So that's one technique is just pulling the old needles off. The, the other technique which I actually like to use is I scissor prune them off. And what I do is I come in very close to the base of the needles. If I can get in here here and I just cut them so you're left with two individual needles and you're left with a little tiny stub on the bottom of your branch and those needles will turn brown quite quickly and fall off. Um, I like to prune them with scissors uh, just because I think it's if you start pulling the needles off you can pull off small buds that are trying to emerge that you may not hardly see. There, there'll be very tiny buds back budding for next year. That's the reason I like to scissor prune is that you're not damaging any buds that are forming on the branch. And both ways work well but uh, that's just my preference. So the old needles, to find them they're usually longer they're a darker green. You can see the new growth is a lighter green color. So that's how you find them and then I'm just going to go in. Careful not to cut the new buds or the new sh needles and scissor prune them. There we go. So that's what I'm doing and I'm going to go over every branch and remove all the old needles. Okay, so after about 40 minutes, I finished removing all the old needles from last summer. And you can see the tree looks 
a lot nicer looks tidier neater it's nice with the small needles and I'm really glad I removed all the old needles in the upper part of the tree because it was getting really dense up there all the old needles from last year were blocking out a lot of the new buds and it cleans it up so you can see the structure quite nicely and we can go in and do a little pruning of some of the shoots that are just not needed so let's go up top and I'll show you all the branches here yeah so it was getting quite dense in here and there's a lot of some of these shoots here like you can see we've got a, a side bud here and a side bud here so we could remove that more vigorous one off there and same on this branch we've got some pairs of branches in developing here so we could remove that strong leader off to get our crown a little more compact and better shaped so here we go we're just going to remove that and we're going to move this tip once I get in here like so makes the crown look a little neater um, yeah so you just want to check for overlapping branches and things making sure each branch gets a spot of sunlight yeah some fixing in here we could do we're getting a little dense in this area um, thinking of taking the tip off here like that the rest aren't too too bad we'll leave it for now so the next step uh, I said I was going to talk about bark and I am so I'm at the back of the tree now which I haven't touched and you can see up here the lichen how it's uh, growing quite thick and it's obscuring the texture of the bark on a pine tree we want to see these plates of bark that's uh, you know the look of mature pine trees is to get those nice plates of bark on them so up top you can't see it the lichens just obscuring it so I, I just took a brush and I, I brush it off and I do lose a lot of uh, some of the flaky bark here However, I uh, actually want that, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, on a pine tree, if you have that loose flaky bark on it, it to me it actually makes the tree look smaller. <laughs> it, uh, the flaky bark shows, you know, maturity and age, but uh, on a pine tree, a lot of the time, if you want your tree to look more miniature, you want to scrape all that loose flaky bark off. If you look at a tree in nature, you can go back and look at some of the Austrian pine reference videos. You'll see that the you'll see that the trunk on it is actually quite smooth when viewed from the distance. And that's the look I'm after in the tree is I want the place of bark, but I don't want them too loose or it doesn't look doesn't look right to me. So that's why I usually scrape off all my flaky bark and my lichen and it gets replaced by uh, new bark. And I just dry brush it. Bark is the kind of thing that it's hard to imitate the real age of bark. It's, um, you know, maturity in bark comes with age. And by having flaky bark on your trunk, to me it looks like 
the trees being isolated in a forest. No animals have crawled up the trunk. Um, it, it looks too fragile to me. So that's the reason I like to scrape all the really loose flaky bark off my trees and try and keep this these tighter plates that are closer to the trunk line. As I said uh, in one of my earlier videos, when I first got this tree, it was a nursery tree. It had been really rapidly grown and there was huge out of scale plates of bark on it and I stripped them all off. I stripped the bark right down to the, till it just started bleeding sap. So a very thin layer of bark was left and then I let it grow again. It looked pink at first and then after about uh, a year or two it turned quite gray and mature looking. So, yeah, bark is the kind of thing, it, it, it uh, you know, when it's exposed to sunlight, it, it gets that nice gray color on the Austrian pine. You can see the stuff underneath the lichen is more of a reddy color. There. Yeah, so to me that looks better already. <laughs> so the last thing we want to do today is just clean the tree up. We just want to get rid of all our old needles from last year. That I pruned off. Some of our flaky bark here. And we'll give the moss a trim. So again, we're just going to come in with our curved scissors and get our you know, our big tufts back down to size. Like so. Um, I haven't started fertilizing this tree yet. It's, uh, as I said, it's uh, June 16th. The needles are still hardening off. It'll be probably, probably another two weeks and I'll start fertilizing with dilute fertilizer and I'll increase the strength towards fall. Each tree, it doesn't matter how big the pot is, you've got a miniature landscape underneath your tree and it can really add to the realism of your tree to make it look big and mature. Um, so what I've done on this tree is I stripped away all the moss around the base of the tree and I put sand down. On a coniferous tree you, you don't get lush moss usually growing around the base of the tree. All the pine needles fall down and fall, creates a really acidic soil and moss doesn't really grow under coniferous trees so that's the reason I've cleared the moss away, left it around the perimeter and uh, sort of created a miniature landscape. So I'm going to continue pruning the moss. We're not going to take it too far down. I want to leave some of it green so it looks okay tonight when I have our display. Um, the roots on this tree, it's getting good root flare and it's not by accident. <laughs> uh, this tree when I initially got it had probably one of the most horrible root systems I've ever seen in a tree. And uh, slowly through the years, I've been working on the roots to get a nice flat radial root base. And it's slowly coming. When we go to repot this tree, I'll show you uh, what I do for root pruning on coniferous trees. Um, I find most people don't work on the roots enough on a coniferous tree. Uh, a lot of times people will just cut off the roots in the perimeter of the root ball and repot it with fresh soil around it. And uh, if you're trying to sort out roots, you'll never sort out your surface roots that way. You've got to go in. I usually uh, bare root my trees, wash the roots, and sort them out like I do with my deciduous trees. 
I'm not quite as aggressive with the root pruning, but uh, at times I've been fairly aggressive. Um, roots on coniferous trees aren't that much different from the roots of any other tree, like a maple or a deciduous tree. They grow the same way, they can be pruned the same way, just not as extreme. So what I'm trying to do here is get more of a gradual transition from the mossy areas to the to the sand. Try and make it look a little more gradual of a transition. It's getting there. We want to leave some of it long, but uh, not all of it. Kind of high on this side, we've got to take it off more here. Now this tree, uh, this is my first wiring job for an entire tree and it's not a very good wiring job. A lot of the branches are going to be repositioned when I wire it next and adjusted. So we'll slowly make it look a better and better tree. This tree isn't what I'd call a real pretty tree. It's got a lot of ugly knobs on the trunk and... But we work with what we have and we uh, keep trying to improve it. So that's it for today. I'm going to continue uh, fooling around with my landscape here, pruning my moss, get it ready for the open house tonight. And uh, yeah, that's an update on our Austrian pine. And we'll uh, continue following the tree. If you check in the playlist section of the channel, you can uh, follow along the progression of this tree. So Nigel Saunders from KW Bonsai, we'll see you next time.